Hey, welcome back to BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Joining us today is Raquel Packets, uh, the president of Zen Freight Solutions. Raquel, good morning to you. Good morning to you, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Doing great. Thank well, you know you. what? Hold on a second. He's not gentleman <laughs> and drive safe, Dave. You know, he gets kind of confused when you loop uh, us in that same. I'll take it. I'll take it this morning. <laughs> great job. Hey, um, and you're doing well? I am. I am staying warm. It's about a whole 20 degrees here in Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, thank you. Brutal. No, thank you. No, not like that for sure. Hey, so Raquel, do us a favor. Tell us a little bit about who you are and your company. Sure thing. I'm Raquel Packets, president of Zen Freight Solutions. We're a third party transportation uh, partner. I work with mostly owner operators and very small trucking companies. Um, and my niche market is flatbed. So flatbed, hotshot, anything that needs to be done right away, I can help. Ooh, boy, that that flatbed business, that's not for the that's not for the that's not for the easy, right? You know, the, we have the dry van carriers that just put it in a box and go. You have the reefers that have to make sure that it's cool enough. Then you have the flatbed business that takes a lot of work. Drive safe, Dave. He's an ex flatbedder right here, Raquel. Oh yeah, I did a flatbed a long time. There's tarping, strapping, chaining, blocking. There's all that stuff that goes along with it. And, the setup, the breakdown, all that stuff that goes along with it. So I'll why flatbed, Raquel? How did you? Yeah. Why did you choose that flatbed market? Well, I um, I started my career at PLS Logistics locally here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and we were really heavy in the flatbed market. So I grew my name and kind of just stuck with it. I've also been on a flatbed and helped a driver tarp a coil before, so I have a load of compassion for all of the heaviness of tarps and everything that drivers have to go through out there in the on the day to day. Hey, so Raquel, tell us a little bit uh, in our listener and audience right now. Again, these are the independent contractors, company drivers. What makes you? What makes Zen Freight different than say any other broker out there? Well, when you call, you're talking to myself or one of my two team members. So there, it's a very small team here. We care a lot about the drivers. We make sure that we're connecting and uh, we're going to learn a little bit about each driver to make sure that we know uh, where, their, where their best lanes are so that we can keep them moving. Um, we make sure that every driver has all of the information they need. Uh, we we take it that extra mile, we'll put it that way. I, I, I was going to ask you, and as we talk about it, Rick was talking about the markets um, earlier and how they've changed dramatically over the last couple of years. How has you seen your business change dramatically over the last couple of years, similar to what we're discussing, or, or just let, let us in on what you know? Sure. I've seen flatbed rates go from an average of about a dollar fifty to a dollar seventy-five to now up to two twenty-five, two fifty a mile um, on the average flatbed load now. Yeah, crazy to think that it wasn't very long ago, a couple of years ago, that 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 freight, that flatbed freight, the rates were had just sunk, and there wasn't much going on. And now we've got a lot of things happening, right? We have the the infrastructure getting ready to happen. That that just preaches and talks to that flatbed market. Um, are you? We talk about drivers, the driver shortages. Talk to us a little bit. I'm going to move into that too. The driver shortage in that flatbed, as we start moving more and more of this infrastructure, how do you see that impacting that flatbed business? Oh, I'm already seeing it happening. Um, same day trucks are nearly impossible to, to line up. And um, I think a lot of drivers are even booked for about five to six days out now. So the best thing I can uh, tell everyone is to make sure that you have good relationships. You know, that's I'm always talking to my drivers to know what there is on their schedule, what they're planning for, and make sure that I can get them ahead of time before anyone else can and keep them busy. Yeah, and, 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 and that's a great lead. On our freight and review we did just before this, we talk about load tenders, and, and that's us making sure we're educating the shippers on, hey, listen, if you have, a, if you have something that's got to move tomorrow, let me know four days ago. Don't spring it on me today because to your point, there's a chance that that truck is already gone, right? Right, right. There, um, there's so much freight. Um, if a driver is sitting for more than an hour to load, they're going to leave. They're going to go get something else that they can 
get loaded and get moving because time is money in this industry. And, and I'll tell you, uh, the big emphasis we have on the show is, of course, always safety. And we, we sure would like to know how you, um, what you look at, your viewpoint on safety and what you do different than maybe another um, 3PL as far as when it comes to safety. Sure thing. So I always make sure that I talk to both the dispatcher and driver to make sure everybody understands what the requirements are of the load, um, everything that they need to have, and just so there's a full understanding. Um, on top of that, if there's directions that they need, I make sure that I get them first and I check them out and then I will then hand them off to the driver just so that they don't have to worry about it. Take that extra mile, you know. Gotcha. And that's important. And, and I, I heard you lead off with you talk to the dispatcher and the driver. You talk to the dispatcher primarily. And then when you want the truth, you pick up the phone and you call the driver, right? <laughs> I'm always making sure that I, I talk to the driver just to be sure that they fully understand all of the requirements. Um, when you're, you're securing a large coil that's 48,000 pounds to the back of your flatbed, you have to know what you're doing. You have to be sure that you understand what the requirements are and, and how big of a responsibility you're taking on. When you, when you do that, how do you ensure that they, they know? Like, do, how, do you look at these guys with experience or how do you judge their experience? I'm just curious because you just talked about the coil, you talked about the safety, and you talked about how do you know exactly that they know what they're doing? Hmm. Honestly, through talking with them, um, if a driver understands what a coil rack is, then they've already uh, loaded a coil before. <laughs> I, I will ask what their experience is, how long they've been running, um, get an idea of how many tarps they have on their truck. You know, If they can talk the lingo back with me, then I know that they've been a flatbedder for a while. If they're a, a drive-in guy that just came over to be a flatbed and they're like, well, what's a coil rack or what are pipe stakes? Then I'm probably not going to work with them on, on my freight just because I want to make sure everyone's safe. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, what's this tarp thing you speak of? You know, <laughs> I, steel drop tarp, eight feet. What's that? I don't know what a drop tarp is. <laughs> hey, so, so oh, we, we talked to flatbedders. <laughs> Raquel, we talked to flatbedders as well and, and that, that do this on brokerage. And I am curious on this because they're, you know, on that brokerage side with your customer, when you start talking about coils, there, there can be claims with that freight as well. Do the independent contractors, do the drivers, are they sending you pictures of it completely, uh, you know, say tarped up so, so you can go to that ship or that receiver in case there is a claim later on and fight it? Or are you just uh, wait until they get there? Um, yes, after every shipment is loaded, if it does need to be tarped, then we ask for a photograph to be sent over via text. Nice. Um, yeah. Otherwise, sure. uh, we will just ask for the BOL just to confirm that we are loading the, the proper material every time. Awesome. And I, and I was wondering, and great, I'm going to tell you, that's a great practice. A lot of companies do that, and especially in that flatbed side, when, you, when it comes to claims, right? Um, it's something you've got to do. Do you experience many claims in what you see on that flatbed side as opposed to, you know, on a dry van side or reefer side? We don't experience a whole lot, but on that flatbed, what do you see with claims? In my 13 years of experience, I have only had about five claims total. Um, the most recent one this past year was just a driver going down an Arkansas road and, um, the strap came loose and he must not have noticed and he lost an equipment off the back of the truck. So mm -hmm. that was a big one. Um, but most of the time it's, it's not usually like something that the driver has done. You know, there's a, a something they wreck into or uh, it's an offloading error or something like that. But um, yeah, I haven't had many claims. Yeah, when it falls off the back of the truck, that's not a good thing. I, I so <laughs> wish I was ready for this conversation right now. Because we have a video of a truck, and you may have seen that when an ambulance falls off the back of the flatbed and keeps running down the road on its own. It wasn't chained properly, right? No. It wasn't secured properly. And it's one of the trucks that follow BCB Live. It was their video. They sent it to us, and it literally showed next to them the, the, the ambulance falling off, and then it falls off on a busy, and then it stays on the highway the at, whole time like somebody's 60, driving it. At 60 miles an hour, it goes down the road, and the flatbedder at one point, miles down the road, had to <laughs> hit the ambulance and knock it off the road because it was just 
flying down the road it on, on and it didn't have par- brakes on it didn't have the parking deal on and it was never secured properly to the to the trailer it was a scary scary situation that would be that is crazy <laughs> yeah you, you know what if that that's a video we'll send you because when you talk to your carriers you say it's a secured and they you maybe you don't feel like it is let them watch this video yeah. they'll understand how important the securement of vehicles are of freight is especially on that flatbed side absolutely and make sure that it when you check it out it doesn't matter if somebody else put it on there you check your securement of the load all the time but but interesting stuff and and you know exciting information i i do know did we have uh, pictures or anything that you wanted to see or or, or like that i think i thought we got some photos right oh there you are what are you, what are you loading there crane that is a mini house that the high school had built and they needed it out within like a week. So we had to do some some uh, local maneuvering and we got a crane in there to get that thing onto the trailer. We, we probably could have uh, got it onto a tilt bed, but it was a little tall. So this was the next best thing in our time crunch. <laughs> you know what? I see that picture on that one. I can't imagine many of our listeners saying that needs to be out there on my hunting ranch. You know, I need that on my deer blind <laughs> right there. Blind, There's yeah. some more freight right here. Wow. Oh, I love it. I love it. Drive safe, Dave. Just a different kind of freight, right? Oh, yeah. I've been there, done most of that. What? Now, that I have never done. That right what? there, that is a heavy, well, I'm passing heavy, on this. <laughs> that's a heavy load right there. What is this? What's going on in this picture, Raquel? Oh gosh, that is a super load that was delivered locally here in my town. Um, I wasn't actually able to to transport that myself, but I saw it and I was like, I have to get a photo of this. I would assume that that's probably 180,000 pounds or so. There's a lot of axles on that trailer yeah, and sure um, it, it's pretty tall. <laughs> It looks yeah. like one of those generators or something. That yeah, knows again, that's that, that flatbed, a lot of work. Hey, Raquel, I want to thank you for, for being part of BCB Live. I'm going to ask you to say something in a second. But first, hey, where, if, if we for our listeners that watch us, they want to find some freight, how do they fi- find your freight to move for you? And, and how do they get in contact with you? Sure. Anyone can reach out to me here. Um, our office line is 724-800-3100. Or you can reach us at zenfreightsolutions.com. Love it. We want you to, you know, again, when I when I when I hear you right here, if I'm a flat better out there, I'm picking up the phone. I'm gonna call you. I want to move some of that big heavy freight, you know. Uh, no, uh, no. You know. <laughs> but you know, it maybe it pays more. I don't know. Hey, I want to do one more thing. We do this with everybody. We want you to say your name and then say BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much. This is Raquel Packets coming from you live with BCB Live, the, the safest, safest station in the nation. All right. Bam! Thank, thank you, thank you, thank very you much. so much. Thank you, Raquel. <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show. Drive safe, Dave. Again, another, uh, a, you know, a, just a great person to have on the show. And it shows, you know, for, for our listeners out there, you know, broker, there's a bunch of brokers out there, but you want to, to work with somebody that really cares about you, right? Really knows what you are doing, especially the independent contractor out there that can get into your day-to-day and, and, and make it personal with you.